Hello guys, how are you? I hope everybody is doing fine. In today's lecture, we will be discussing the concept of Murray machines. Uh, there are various different uh, variants of DFA. Like for an example, in DFA, what we did, we had an initial state, and then we basically go to the accepting state. Now the point was that it was entirely dependent on the initial state itself. So it means if I have to accept two ones, so I have to from from this initial state and this initial state and from this initial state Q naught to Q one and then Q one put to Q two. So by default there are uh, two ones that are accepted over here. So uh, now the important thing was that for us to accept any string, we were entirely dependent upon Q. So this is something which is uh, which is solved in this variant of uh, DFA. Although it will be a variant of DFA, that means that would mean we have uh, every state accepts is actually every state except means every state is an accepting state so that is something we will be discussing today uh, so since uh, we are discussing the concept of uh, Murray machine so let me tell you the exact def definition of Murray machine so exact definition of Murray machine is that Every state, every state is dependent on present input only. Every state is dependent upon the present input only, and every state has an output. It means if every state uh, is dependent upon uh, a particular uh, input that we provide, and that means whatever the state that we have will have an output associated with it. So every state has an output associated with it. Now the real life example I can quote for a Murray machine is the real life example is elevator. You know, in elevator, what do you do? You have all the floors, they are your states, right? All the floors are your states. And if you can tell me that every floor is, let's say if we are going from one, we are going in an elevator and we have 17 floors. So every floor has an output because over here the output is wherever you are reaching. So it means every floor will act as a state that has an output. This is a concept of Murray machine. The first tuple of Murray machine is capital Q, which all know is a set of states. Then we have uh, epsilon, which is known as set of input symbols. Now, guys, uh, we have another tuple which is associated with us is delta. Uh, this uh, this delta is actually representing your output alphabet. As I told already that your state is associated with one output, by the way. So this delta is representing that output alphabet. Then we have uh, uh, this delta is representing transition function. Transition function, again, you have an input. You give any input symbol to it. You represent a particular state. Then we have output function. Output function, what it does is it basically maps your state into 
your output alphabet it means your state will have an output uh, associated with it and last not the least is your q not which is your initial state so how these tuples are uh, associated we can only discuss with the help of a particular diagram so just a minute i'll be basically creating a diagram of mure machine yeah so just you can see over here we have a mure machine associated with us this is a diagram of mure machine and how you will be given a particular input also so the input is already given to us and that will give you a particular output as well so as you can see uh, that every state this q0 is associated with output 0 this q1 is associated with output one uh, this q2 is associated with output 0 and even q3 is associated with output 0 so how we are going to construct a mure machine so it's very simple uh, that we have to first of all try to create the transition and then associate the output of it so if i'm talking about this q0 so if i draw this q0 and when it is given 0 it basically goes to q3 right when it is given 1 it is going to q1 right similarly q1 when it is given 0 it goes to itself and q1 when it is given 1 it has actually gone to q2 right q2 when it is given 0 it goes to itself q2 when it is given 1 it goes to q3 and q3 when it is given 0 it goes to itself and q3 when it is given 1 it goes to q0 so this is a diagram that i drew for these particular parts fine so i have drawn the diagram for these particular parts but we should know that every state just like q0 has an output associated with it is zero so i am putting zero one even this q1 is having an output one associated with it i am putting it as one q2 is having an output associated with it is zero so i am putting it as zero and q3 when it is given uh, q3 is having an output associated with it is zero so i have put up zero so this is how you construct a mure machine now the question which is given to us is we have to accept a string zero triple one so we have to accept the string zero triple one so how will i solve this particular question so zero triple one how it is solved let me just tell you a brief overview of it uh we have a string zero triple one we always start from initial state so our initial state is actually q not and q not is given zero guys when it is given zero when q not is given zero it goes to q3 so i am writing so over here the important point to understand is that every state has an output associated with it right so that q not is having an output associated with it is zero uh, obviously it will go to a particular transition but it is having an output associated with it so i clearly know that q not output is zero associated with it right so similarly i will write the output of the state which is given so q not has an output associated with is is zero but when the transition of q not with zero is done it actually goes to q3 and we have triple one left now guys you have to see the output of q3 so the output of q3 is zero so i'm putting 
zero over here. This is my output. And yes, when Q three is given one, you just check Q three when it is given one, it goes to Q naught. So I'm writing Q naught, and I'm having two ones. And now I have to write the output of Q naught. The output of Q naught was zero two. Q naught when one is given, it goes to Q one. So I've written Q one, and one is there. But we have to write the output of Q one. The output of Q one is one. And Q one when one is given, Q one when one is given, it goes to Q two. I'm writing Q two, but I have to write the output of Q two. And what is the output of Q two? The Q two output is also zero. So my answer would be triple zero one zero. And my input was zero triple one. My input was zero triple one, and my output is triple zero one zero. Now the important takeaway from this entire question is that we have input which was zero triple one, and whatever output we have got was triple zero one zero. So input was having length four, and output was having length five. So guys, this is something which is uh, very noticeable in gate questions as well. You can be given a Moore machine, and with a particular input, you must know the output would be always length. If it is n, it would be length plus one. You will always have an output one greater than the length of the input. This is very important takeaway from a uh, Moore machine. I hope this is clear. so in the next lecture we will be discussing about uh, the other variant of bsa thank you